poop shoot. It's me, Darth Cobain 17. Long time no talk. Maybe? I don't know when last time I posted one of these is, but, uh, or was, I guess, not is. English. It's great. Um, so, today I have five things to discuss. We're a little movie heavy this time, but there's a little bit of everything. First thing up is the single lone book I read during this last bit of action. Um, another entry in the Star Wars High Republic line that they're really pumping right now called The Rising Storm. So this is the second book in this series uh, after the, the pirate gang known as the Nihil and their mar leader Marchion Rowe who can deduce these hyperspace lanes where they can beat everybody to the action um, what first was revealed in that first book. In this second book, the Chancellor of the Republic, Lena So, is pressing on with her great works across the galaxy to try and unite the galaxy. And this next piece of uh, action is the Republic Fair, which takes place on a world called Valo. Um, there's going to be this brand new, amazing, huge starship that they've engineered that's going to be on display there. There's going to be all these exhibits from different worlds across the Republic where people can see, you know, the native wildlife and the food and the culture and all that sort of thing. Um, so it can be attended by whoever can make it and also televised to everybody else around the galaxy who are interested in seeing it. So that's what's going on. But in the meantime, there's, there's other stirrings. There's this new plant-based, uh, enemy called the Drengear, which kind of spread like like weeds basically and uh devour all before it so the jedi are off fighting that on on other worlds on a different front so they're a bit divided and what what jedi forces are are left a lot of them head to valo for the fair uh, but they don't believe they're really under any threat they believe they beat back the nihil in that first story and they're not really a threat because they haven't been heard from since then really so uh but little do they know this is all part of the Nihil's plan. So the uh, the Republic Fair gets underway and uh, they are attacked big time by the Nihil and their forces. And the Jedi have to kind of mount a response to this. And along the way, there's, there's uh, uh, I think, one or two Jedi die. Um, Bel Zedifar, whose master, Loden Greatstorm, apparently perished in the first book, but he was actually just captured. But then he dies again in this book. So there's all this... Uh, consequences and action and, and violence that take place in this in this book and while all of this is happening there's also dissension in the nihil ranks which is always happens to the bad guys right whether it's star wars or any other series there's always uh deaths within the evil faction because they all kill each other off because they're so power hungry and evil right so uh, at the same time the nihil are having their own internal um problems and Marchion Rowe's leadership is being challenged and we get some more insight into just what is going on with the uh, the major players behind the nails so um very interesting book very fun uh very good read I, I like where this line is going um there's lots of new worlds I haven't heard of in in in, in the other Star Wars eras uh and of course lots of new characters because it's a different time sort of thing so um can't wait to see what comes next next up Shang-Chi and the Ten Rings, right? That's what it's called. And the Legend of the Ten Rings. Uh, this movie, the plot behind it is that a thousand years ago, a guy named uh, Zhu Wenwu, something like that, discovers these Ten Rings, which basically grant him crazy powers. He can't be destroyed. He has immeasurable uh, power, and so he can, he basically builds an army, and they just roll across the lands, taking over stuff and doing whatever the hell they want. Um, in the year 1996, he decides he's going to go to Talo, a mythical village that is uh, supposed to hold all these uh, magical creatures. And there he meets a woman named Ying Li, who is basically Talo's uh, protector. They battle. During the battle, they kind of fall for each other, eventually hook up. He puts his ten rings away, but Talo won't take Wenwu, so they move off and have their own life, have two kids. Shang-Chi and Ji uh, Lang or something like I can't remember her name. Um, and uh, and everything is good up until uh, Shang-Chi is about seven years old and his mother Ying Li is killed by uh, some of Wen Wu's former enemies. And uh, once again, he picks up the Ten Rings and goes ape shit and regains his reign of terror and puts Shang-Chi immediately into training to kind of succeed him eventually and did brutal training. Um, so eventually he sends Shang-Chi off on a assassination mission to take care of the person who finished off his mother but shang chi although he goes through with the mission he can't take that kind of lifestyle and that kind of violence and stuff so he 
fucks off during his mission and moves to San Francisco and grows up there under the name Sean. So in current times, Sean and his best friend Katie are like parking valets. And uh, But all of a sudden one day on a subway ride home, he's attacked by this gang of uh, mercenaries and they're after this pendant that he has around his neck. And he gets a mysterious postcard from his sister about something. So he goes to find her um, and she's like, I didn't get no postcard. I didn't send you no postcard. What's going on here? And she runs this weird fight club in, in Macau and uh, all of a sudden they're attacked by these same guys again. Um, so Wenwu eventually captures his son and daughter again, along with Katie, who's along for the ride. And he's like, yeah, we're getting into Talo and you guys are going to help me do it. I want to see what's in there because your mother's in there. Apparently I can hear her calling to me, but it's all, a, it's all, it's all a trap by what's really in Talo. And I'm not going to spoil it for you in case you haven't seen it. So good movie. And the guy that plays Shang-Chi is actually from my city and went to the university that I work at. So that's kind of cool. Next up, Spider-Man No Way Home. I finally saw it. Took forever, right? In this movie, it takes place right after the last Spider-Man movie, uh, No Way Home, Homecoming. Uh, or no, was that the first one? I don't remember. But when uh, the Mysterio guy or whatever announces to the world that Peter Parker is Spider-Man. So in the aftermath of that, there's there, everybody's divided. Like, oh, he's a murderer, he's a whatever. And others are like, oh, he's a hero and whatever. But there's all this hoopla surrounding him and he's taken, he's got all these lawsuits. But uh, Daredevil, Matt Murdock, uh, gets all of his charges dropped, but his life is still a zoo. And him and Ned and MJ all apply to MIT. They're rejected because they're like, no, there's too much hoopla around you guys. So we're, we don't want that at our school. So Peter's like, God, I've ruined everybody's life. So he goes to Doctor Strange and says, can you cast a spell that will make the world forget that I am Spider-Man? And uh, so during the spell, Peter's like, okay, but don't make sure Ned and MJ and Aunt May don't forget. Uh, and then this, and then that. So all Stephen Strange is having to like rework this spell while it's going on and eventually it all explodes on him and uh, they don't know what the repercussions are until all of a sudden when Peter's out looking uh, to talk to the MIT uh, recruitment lady, Doc Ock attacks. Yes, Doc Ock from the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man. Um, and then all of a sudden Green Goblin shows up. And then there's Sandman. And then there's Kurt Connors. And then there's uh, Electro. Um, so all these, uh, Stephen Strange basically shows up and says, yeah, well, that spell backfired in uh, yeah, multiverse. Uh, these are different enemies from different multiverses uh, that other Spider-Man have fought. And uh, now they're your problem, right? So they're, they're trying to find a way to send them back. And Stephen Strange is like, yeah, we can send them back. Because uh, they all appeared right before their deaths in those original movies. Um, we'll send them back. But then Peter's like, but no, but then they'll die. Can't we reform them? So he's like, we'll keep them here and we'll try and fix them, right? And uh, but So they try that and eventually uh, it backfires because Green Goblin does not reform and kills Aunt May, basically. So Peter is just, ah! So he fucks off and gets lost and Ned and MJ are trying to find him. And Ned finds out that he actually has some sort of the same power as, as Stephen Strange and, and Wong where he can open portals and shit. He's got some sort of magic in him. So they start looking for Peter that way. And in doing so, allow the other Spider-Men into their universe. So Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield are suddenly there. And they find uh, the Tom Holland, Peter Parker, the new Spider-Man. And they all kind of talk him down and say, yeah, this happens. Stuff like this happens. I lost my uncle... Uh, Oh, fuck, what's his name? Now I forget. Um, you know, Toby Maguire's, I lost my uncle. Garfield's like, I lost Gwen. Um, so finally, Peter comes around. He's like, let's do this. So the, it's the three Spider-Man along with Ned and MJ putting to rights everything that went wrong during this spell casting. And uh, I'm not going to let you know how the... Oh, shit, I dropped one that I was going to do. Um, how the end end goes in case you haven't seen it yet, but it's a really neat movie. Lots of laughs. It's fun having the old Spider-Man back and all the villains and stuff. Willem Dafoe is so crazy. His face just goes mental when he, like he's such a good actor and he's just got that face that makes everything amazing. So a uh, really awesome movie. Loved it. As did everybody else. I mean, who doesn't? Stupid people. That's who. Next up, Venom. Let there be carnage. This one also starts like, uh, Shang-Chi with a flashback to the year 1996 when a mass murderer named Cletus Cassidy uh, is at the home for unwanted boys and girls and uh, along with his uh, girlfriend love of his life Francis was her name Francis I can't remember but a girl who has mutant powers where she can scream and just like so loud and destroy things and hurt people with her scream um, one day he's taken or no she's taken away to be taken to Ravencroft and they both lose their minds 
and uh, but then we fast forward to present day when Cletus Cassidy um, uh, is soon to be sent to the electric chair or the lethal injection or whatever like that and uh, and he wants to talk with Eddie Brock that's the only person he'll talk to to tell his life story yada yada so um, Eddie goes to um, talk to Cletus Cassidy and in so doing um, he grabs Eddie Brock while he's at the bars and uh, and bites him or something like that or whatever and so he gets a taste of Eddie's blood which has the venom symbiote in it so then Cletus gets a symbiote of his own and he becomes carnage so when the uh, he doesn't know it yet but when the lethal injection goes and stuff the symbiote fights it and then he and then he just destroys and escapes and then goes and frees his girlfriend uh, and the two of them set out on a reign of terror throughout the city and uh, in the meantime Venom and Eddie Brock have had kind of a falling out with with everything that's going on and how crazy Eddie's life is with Venom so they kind of separate and Venom goes out and has other hosts and stuff like that um, but with Cletus now Carnage and his girlfriend Lewis as well um, wreaking all sorts of havoc all over the city. Eventually, um, Eddie's old girlfriend, Anne, and her fiancé, Dan, have to help Eddie reconcile with, with uh, Venom and then eventually take on Cletus and, and, his, and his lady friend and um, stop all of the carnage, basically. So, so such a fun movie. Just like Spider-Man, it's, it's, uh, I can't wait until these two finally meet in whatever movie event is going to happen. Um, it's, it's so funny, the, the relationship between Eddie and Venom and just the way they talk to each other and, and the, just Venom's straightforward, bizarre kind of manner and and, and, the, and the things he says are just so funny. So I love Venom. He was one of my favorite characters as a kid. Um, and uh, and to, to see this movie series kind of keep going on is just amazing. I hope they just keep on making more and more. And he starts to appear in other movies once the whole Marvel Sony thing. I don't know how it's going to go, whatever. Um, but I really hope Spider-Man and Venom will get into, you know, the rest of the Marvel verse more regularly, not just on their own sort of thing. So last up, I don't have a case for this because it was a digital download on my Nintendo Switch. But I recently finished a game called Jenny LeClue. Detective Ooh. This is a cool little game that is basically, your, it's a detective uh, kind of figuring out game. And it's so there's a bit of action to it, but a lot of time you're looking for stuff and you're making decisions on what she's going to say to other characters. But uh, the story is that there's a Arthur K. Finkelstein, I think his name is, is this author who writes this Jenny LeClue book series for young readers. And uh, she solves all these crimes in every book. But the publisher's like, you can't publish anymore because nobody ever dies. There's no consequences. It's all just candy, you know, sweet candy reading, you know, like nothing ever happens of any significance. So he's like, if you want another shot at this, you got to have somebody die. But Finkelstein's like, no, I can't kill off any of my beloved characters. So this is basically the story of him writing a new Jenny LeClue story with some consequences and you control Jenny along that path. And uh, the way the story goes is that uh, in the town of Arthurton where she lives, she's the daughter of a, um, a, a forensic um, kind of investigator, uh, her mother is, so she's she's kind of taught in the detective arts and that sort of thing and uh soon on into the adventure she finds the dean of the university there uh murdered in the library and so this sets off a big storyline uh that kind of evolves as you go and, and and there's choices you make that will change the outcome of everything and uh, the game actually ends on a cliffhanger and uh, i was not expecting that so apparently there's going to be a jenny leclue too but when i looked it up online there's nothing on it so i don't know if jenny leclue was a newer game um, or if it's just taking a long time for the sequel to come out. But either way, I want to play it. So that is all. Three movies, a book, and a game. And I've already got some stuff that's going to be done very soon for my next video. So the next one shouldn't be that far off in the future. So until then, you'll just have to hang tight. So long.